If I had to title this message, I would title it, Don't Leave Quietly. Don't Leave Quietly. Turn to your neighbor and say, Don't Leave Quietly. Don't Leave Quietly. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 16, we're going to start reading in verse 25. We've got a few scriptures, but I've got to lay a foundation for you. Let, just allow me to read just for a moment. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 through 34. I'm reading now the NIV today. I love you guys. The Bible says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners, notice what they were doing. They were listening to them. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake, hallelujah, that the foundation of the prisons were shaking. At once, everybody say at once. Yeah, at once, it says, the Bible says, all, all, all the prison doors flew open. Not the ones who were just good, who wasn't in much trouble as the other ones. The Bible says there was an earthquake, a violent wind, and all of a sudden, the, all the prison doors were open. And watch what happens here. And everyone's, everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up. And when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. He shouted those words, don't harm yourself. And I feel the unction of God to stop. I'm going to stop right there because I feel something in my spirit when I, when I read that. Listen, I don't know what you're thinking, sir. Ma'am, I don't know what your agenda is, but I'm telling you in Jesus' name, God's not forgotten about you. Don't harm yourself. Don't do something crazy that you're going to have to say I'm sorry for later. Listen, that's a word for somebody. I don't know who it's for, but right now in Jesus' name, somebody's getting ready to do something you know you shouldn't have done. You know you shouldn't go there. You know you shouldn't be with them. So watch me. You ready? This is the intervention from God. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but you ready? Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're all here. The jailer called for the lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. Verse 30. He brought them out and asked, Sirs, I love this. What denomination are you from? Where's your church at? No, he said these words. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? I love that. I feel the Holy Ghost. What must I do to be saved? They replied, I love this. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Notice he just didn't stop with the jailer. He said, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can get saved, not just you, but your whole household. I love this. Then they spoke a word of the Lord to him and all the others in the house. Verse 33, and listen to this. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. And immediately he and all his household were baptized. Oh, man. Verse 34, the jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. Let me give you a backdrop really quick. This is so good. I want, again, God's really just... Bless me with this. I've read this a thousand times, but this is what God has given me. Paul and Silas were in trouble for preaching. How many of you know, <laughs> I tell preachers this all the time, if you're not getting in trouble, you're not preaching. Oh, I'm, okay. If you're not, if you're not, listen, if you're not making hell tremble, if you're just going by and just, just doing your little thing and nothing's, it, oh, kumbaya, everything's good in my household. Praise God, we paid our bills and nothing's going on in your life. Watch this, you ain't doing something right. Because here's what I noticed, when God is behind the pulpit and God is in the atmosphere of this world, it's going to mess up the world in a holy, unctional way. It's going to say, you know what? I may not agree with everything that's going on, but here's what I know. When God is in the house, there's going to be trouble followed. Oh, yeah. I don't know why things are happening the way they are. I know. Because you're, if you're obeying God, if you're doing what God wants you to do, watch this. It's going to mess the worldly people up, and they will hate you. You'll be on their hit list. Even church people. Even church people. I, I'll get to that later. Because i got to stick to what God put in my spirit. The crowd, they started shouting. Now, I love what they were shouting. These two men... They are messing this city up. They're saying things, man, about this Jesus. 
the devil's being cast out, the lame's walking, blinded eyes are coming open, and all of a sudden, man, these men, they're turning our city upside down and inside out. But how many of y'all are thankful we serve a God, hallelujah, that'll turn your city inside out, right side up, it'll stand it up, it'll back it up, it'll do whatever it's got to do. When God is in the house, I'm telling you, he'll back everything he says up with the authority of heaven. Everything. All of a sudden, here's what Paul and Silas was. They got in trouble for preaching in the marketplace. Here's Paul and Silas. They, then all of a sudden, they, they drug them into the inner parts of the marketplace, and they stripped them. I'm talking they stripped them public because it would embarrass them. That's why they did Jesus like that. They, they, didn't, they didn't leave no clothes on Jesus. They stripped him. It was a custom to do that. And, and all of a sudden, they stripped him and Paul and Silas, and they beat them, and then they threw them into the innermost parts of the prison. But here's the deal. Listen to me. I'm going to pull a Paul Harvey on you really quick. But that's, here's, now here's the rest of the story. Here's the rest of the story. The Bible says at midnight. See, sometimes I think God does his best work when everybody else is sleeping, <laughs> when everybody else is down, nobody else is looking. God's still up at midnight. God still is awake at midnight. God still loves his children. God still has a plan and a purpose. But the Bible says at midnight, an earthquake came. The Bible says at midnight, there was something that happened. Jesus Christ stood up on his feet and heaven came down. But at midnight, the Bible says the wind started blowing so violently. Y'all think about this. See, we read the Bible like it's a fictional book. Well, it, it happened for Paul and Silas. Blessed be the name. Watch me. No, it can happen to you today. He's still shaking prison doors today. He is still setting the captive free today. He is still in the house today. I wish I had somebody just for a second to give God praise in here. Come on. Come on, 8 o'clock. Hallelujah. And I love this. He says he set everyone free. You know what church looks like? Everybody gets set free. Did y'all hear the preacher? You may have walked in in chains. I feel the Holy Ghost. You may have walked in busted and disgusted and depressed and down. But I'm telling you, listen to me. And when the winds of heaven blow, the prison doors come open. You can walk out free today. Listen to me, sir. Don't you walk out the same way you walked in. If nobody else won't do it, you do it. The Bible says everyone, the red and yellow, black and white, Baptist, the Pentecostal, Episcopalians, everybody. Watch this, let me mess y'all up, y'all ready? There was no such thing as denomination. Y'all can get mad at me if you want. Show it to me in the Bible. There was no such thing. That's why, I got to stay focused. Stay focused. Everybody say, stay focused, be real. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Y'all want to see a church service? You let God loose. You let the Spirit of the Lord loose. Let Him own the church and own the pastor and own the leadership. And I'm telling you, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Really quick, I want to give you three things true salvation will do for you. Three things that true salvation will do for you. Y'all ready? Say amen. Three things true salvation will do for you. Number one, I love this. And this is going to be some things I'm telling you what God downloaded in my spirit. And I believe it's going to help y'all today. You should leave. How many of you know when you come to church, you should leave blessed? You really should be encouraged. Number one, true salvation will set you free from your past. True salvation will set you free from your past. I want everybody listening to me. I want y'all just to ease in. I want you to scoot in just a little bit so you can hear me really good today. Everybody under my voice today. Everybody under my voice today has a past. Come on now, I'm preaching better than y'all acting at 8 o'clock. Well, see, we know everybody else's past. We know what everybody else has done wrong. Sir, I'm talking to you today. Ma'am, I'm talking to you today. I'm talk Let God minister to you today. Listen to me. But the moment, and here's the soul, the gospel truth, and this I'm telling you to set me free Friday in my office preparing this. Listen to me. The moment you say, God, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I make you the Lord of my life. Save my soul. When you do that, at that moment, your prison doors open up and the captive has been set free. At that moment, at that moment, 
Because the Bible says this, this is a, this is a sermon that goes against a lot of people. Because we always try to remind God what he has already died for. He died for your past, your present, and your future sins. So the moment you say, God, save my soul, forgive me of my sins, save me. At that moment, listen to me. At that moment, you are forgiven. Your chains have come off your life. That depression, you're free from your past. You're free from your guilt. You're free from your shame. You're free from your addictions. Hallelujah. You are free. Quit reminding Jesus what he died for. You know what we need to do? And you say, Brian, you're making light of sin. No, I'm not. Sin separates you. But listen to me. I don't acknowledge the sin. I acknowledge the Savior. I acknowledge what Jesus done for my life. I acknowledge that. Listen to me very carefully. The Bible says, whom the Son sets free is free what? Indeed. I'm looking at a forgiven church. I'm looking at some forgiven people. I'm, you're, you're looking at a pastor that is completely and totally forgiven no matter what people may say, no matter what the church may say, no matter what people try to mark me, my pastor they may say. I'm telling you today, I am free and free and free and free indeed. Hallelujah. Some of y'all still don't believe that. I'm telling you, let Jesus minister to you this morning. I'm telling you, it's a good word. See, people may not forgive you, but God has. And, and listen, and that's all that matters. Y'all hear me. We got too many people not answering their call. We got too many people just sitting in a chair because you are thinking more of your past than you are what he did on that cross. So if we really believe in forgiveness, we'll accept it. And there'll be a transformation in your life and prison doors, hallelujah, will be opened and you'll be set free. Now listen, I told you people may not forgive you. Now let me minister on, on Christians that do not, do not, I, listen to me, I'm, I'm talking to, to me and you. Let me minister on Christians that who will not forgive someone's past. Oh, they say I forgive them, but they always bring it up. Oh, I, I know, I know that was five years ago, seven years ago, ten years ago. But for some odd stinking reason, we still hold them prisoner. Listen to me, that's exactly, listen, because of your unforgiveness, you are still in prison. Watch, here's what the Bible says, not what Rafferty says. Here's what the Word of God says to all those who will not forgive. Look, Mark 11, verse 25 through 26. Mark 11, verse 25 and 26, New King James. And when you stand praying, forgive. 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 If you have anything against anyone, anyone, your mama, your daddy, your uncle, church member, pastor, deacons, whatever it may be, he says, if you, listen to me, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them. Whew, God doesn't preach that your Father in heaven may also forgive you of your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, y'all hear me, if you hold a grudge, if you do not forgive, if you hold, a, hold, hold them captive, you don't forgive them. I know they hurt you. That's what it says. If you do not forgive, neither, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Boy, I had to make a, a church be really stiff. But let me, let me minister this just a minute. The number one cancer in churches today is unforgiveness. The number one cancer in churches today is unforgiveness. The number one thing in marriages today are unforgiveness. It sure is. It, it is. It's unforgiveness. And who, listen, I, I wrote this down. Who do we think we are not to forgive? <laughs> Who do we think we are that, who, why do we think we're worthy of forgiveness but someone else isn't? Come on, church. Why do you think that you're worthy of dying for and somebody else is not worthy of dying for? And when you say somebody is not, you don't forgive them, what you're saying is, I'm going to break it down to y'all, ready? They are worthy to be condemned to hell. Look, look your Greek words up. That's exactly what it's saying. When you have unforgiveness in your heart, they are worthy to be condemned to hell. Nobody under my teaching, 
Nobody, even the mass murderers in the state penitentiaries. Nobody, nobody, because Jesus said when he died, he died for the world. Nobody is worthy to be condemned to hell. But when you say, I don't forgive you, what you are doing, you are holding them in prison, and you're right beside them in the next cell. Hallelujah. I want everybody to repeat after me. Because I knew this is going to be a sermon. It's going to be hush-hush for a second. We'll get to some preaching here in just a moment. I want everybody to repeat after me. Are you ready? I am forgiven of my past. I forgive anyone who has hurt me. And I'm asking you, God, to forgive me if I hurt anyone else. I am forgiven. Come on, I am forgiven. Come on, I am forgiven. I want this to get in your spirit. I am forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, right there is a prayer that will keep you out of jail. That is a prayer that will keep you out of spiritual prison. When someone, watch, when someone offends you, you don't go to their brother, their mother, or anybody. Listen to me. When someone offends you, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 through 20, you don't go to Beulah her forehead no more. The Bible says you go straight to them and you work it out between you and them, not everybody else. Oh. That means when somebody calls you and they want to complain, Here's your number one question I do is every day. I'm not lying. Every day of my life, here's what I tell people. Have you talked to them? Well, you're my preacher. Have you <laughs> talked to them? Well, Brian, you're my preacher. And I, ha- I should have a right to come to my deacons or my preacher. Have you talked to them? Are y'all okay? Somebody say amen. Y'all know I'm right. Because I'm backing it up with scripture. And that's what God says. The number one cancer in churches today, the number one cancer in marriages today, the number one cancer in the world today is unforgiveness. It's unforgiveness. The Bible says, listen to me. I love this. One more thing before I go to the second point. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. I love this. I love this. I love this. Why is it important for you to live a life worthy for others to see? Watch. And the other prisoners were listening to them. I thought about this. You know right now somebody's watching you? You know when you're in Walmart, aisle 13? (laughs) You know somebody's watching you? You know when you're at home and you think you're all alone? You know somebody's watching you? And you say, well, Brian, who is it? I'm glad you asked. His name is Jesus, number one. But the person sitting beside and watch this, y'all ready? I watch how y'all act. I sure do. Are y'all okay? Somebody say amen. amen. Listen, this is the 8 o'clock service. This is the mature service I always hear. Listen to me. Someone is always watching <laughs> and listening how you act, and how you talk. Somebody say amen. Somebody is all, listen, not just your children. Somebody is always watching how you act and how you talk. And listen, you know what blows my mind? We as Christians, man, it takes us forever to seem like to get to a point in our life where we finally like, oh God, I, I, I'm walking a pretty decent life with you right now. How many of you know all it takes is one word or one action to destroy everything you've been working so hard for? One word or one action, how you act and how you react means a lot. Well, I, I'm a northerner. I don't care if you're a rebel from the south. We go about are we always going to sit back and say, well, that's just how I am? No, let me tell you how you are. Greater is he that is in you and in me than he is in the world. If God be for us, who can be against us? I am the head and I am not the tail. And God will bless me in the city and God will bless me in the field. That's who I am. I don't blame the world on how I act. I don't blame this world 
on how I act. You know why? I don't belong to the world. I belong to Jesus. Sure, I hope y'all get this word today. Number two, true salvation will allow you, and this is it right here, this is it, this is so good. True salvation will allow you to heal the ones you wounded. Greg, I've never seen this in the Bible. Never seen what I'm getting ready to preach to you right now in this Bible. God is so good. True salvation will allow you to heal the ones you wounded. Look here in Acts chapter 16, verse 29 through 33. You with me? Say amen. Acts 16, 29 through 33. The jailer, listen to this, called for the lights to come on. Rushed in, fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Now look at verse 32 and on. Then they spoke a word of the Lord to him and all the others in his house. I love this. At that hour, at that moment of the night, the jailer, look what he did, took them and washed, washed their wounds. Then immediately, he and all his household were baptized. This is the same jail, let me mind you, in the same chapter, was the one who stripped them. This is the same jailer that beat them. This is the same jailer, Johnny, that threw them in the innermost parts of the prison and says, I hate Jews. You are condemned to be to hell. This is the same jailer, Madonna. That did this. Listen to me very carefully. And now, now he is on his knees, Greg. He's taking a cloth and he's washing the wounds on their back that he beat them with the cat of nine tails with. Are y'all serious? Christians do that? The same jailer who beat them now is washing them. See, listen, I wrote this down. If you're, if you're taking notes, this is the note that you need to take right here. Sometimes before God will do his greatest miracle in your life, you have to wash the stripes of the person you wounded. My God. Sometimes before God will do the greatest miracle in my life and the greatest miracle in your life, you have to wash the stripes of the person that you wounded. See, true salvation, listen to me very carefully, true, I'm not talking about counterfeit salvation. I'm not talking about even just coming to church. I'm talking about if you truly get born again. How many of y'all have truly been born again? I'm talking about truly say, God, come into my heart, save me, forgive me of my sins. I don't want to die and go to hell. Redeem me, God. Listen, if that happens, you're sin conscious. You can't sin comfortably. You, you can't sin comfortably. Listen to me. True salvation will humble you and allow you, I wrote this down, opportunity to wash hurt. True salvation will give you opportunity to wash wounds. Wash the stripes of those who wounded you in the past. I'm telling you this week, last, really the last couple months of my life, God has wrecked me. I've called people five years ago that has hurt me. Five years ago. And I asked them to forgive me. Well, Brian, they didn't do nothing to you. I was offended. And see, Matthew 18, where we get very confused as church people, Matthew 18 is not for the one who, who done the offending. Matthew 18 is for the one who's been offended. Golly, this is so good. Five years went back, called people to make it right. One of those people was my father who ran off and left me. You say, Brian, I'll never do I hope y'all are okay today. Listen, to y'all, if y'all can't handle some bold truth, you're at the wrong church. I know what God does in my life to help set me free and keep me out of jail. And it's more than saying a prayer and get out of jail free card. I'm talking about when you have been hurt and you have been wounded and you feel like you can't go on no longer and you're tired, you don't even want to come to church. Offense will keep you in jail. Whew, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. 
here's, here's the thing, listen to me. I've noticed on my journey with the Lord, if you have a relationship and a prayer time with the Lord, you will wash the wounds of those who you hurt. You sure will. Somebody say amen. If you have any kind of relationship with Christ, here's how Kentucky people, are y'all ready? Boy, I told them good, didn't I? Chew tobacco, chew tobacco, spit. We think it's boastful things to hurt people. We think it's okay to be mean to people. It's not. Blessed are those who persecute you for his kingdom's sake. For yours is the kingdom, Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are you who, who they curse. I'm just telling y'all, listen to me. Here's some proof of your salvation. Y'all ready? How do you know? I, I get this question all the time. How do you truly know if you're saved? You come to church? No, I know lost people come to church all the time. How, do you go to Sunday school? Boy, that really right there, I'd make a good Christian. Oh, you do vacation Bible school and you're a teacher. Boy, that really saves you. Oh, you got a suit on and carry a King James. That really makes you saved. No. Here's how you know if you're saved. Y'all ready? Here's one way, one way you know that if you're truly saved. The jailer who beat Paul and Silas got saved in verse 31 and 32. Y'all got me? He got born again, got saved. And in the very next verse, verse 33, he was washing, <laughs> he was washing somebody's back. He was washing the one who he beat, who he stripped, who he condemned to hell. How do you know you're truly a Christian? If you carry a washcloth in your hand. And you're ready at all times to heal a hurt. I'm sorry. Well, you didn't do nothing. I'm sorry. I love you. I love you. Listen, how many of you know when you got people, you're going to have hurt? Come on. How many of y'all been married for more than a day? Oh, that's hurtful. It's true, though. Listen, be careful. Be careful that you don't wound and hurt people. Because I'm telling you, in Jesus' name, there'll be a time when the earth's going to shake. There's going to be a time when God's going to place that same person in your path. And you've got a decision to make, sir. Are you going to be a backwasher, a foot scrubber? Or are you going to be a backstabber? Boy, that's a good word. Somebody write that down. I'm going to preach that second service. Are you going to be a backwasher or a backstabber? Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost on that one. Are you going to be a backwasher or are you going to be a backstabber? Listen to me, there's more power in this church right now. If we as Christians come together and not hurt each other but love each other and come together unified and the body of Christ will just come together and worship God, it don't matter if you're Baptist or Pentecostal as long as you are a foot washer and a back scrubber and not a backstabber. Somebody give God praise. I'm telling you truth today. God. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes you are healed. Listen to me very carefully. God's given me so much revelation. That is more than a physical healing. We always use that verse if somebody is sick. But how many of you know you could be in prison because of unforgiveness and that is a sick situation. God is not confined to one verse just on healing. God says, I just don't want to heal your outsides and make you walk better. God says, I am more concerned about your inside. Because watch this. If you walk in right on the inside, it'll show hallelujah on the outside. Woo! Somebody say amen. I'm so glad to be off vacation telling you in Jesus name I, I hunger for this this is my Bethel this is where God feeds me this is where I get poured out like a drink offering I get to study all week and get in the presence of God and then when we come in here God just gets to explode and the earth starts shaking and the wind starts blowing and I'm telling you in Jesus name the jail cells today are coming open Woo. I don't feel it well you don't want it I'm, so, I'm sorry. I just don't feel it no more. I'm 
tell you don't want it. Because the Bible says, whatever you hunger and desire, I'll fill you. you got to hunger for God more than you do the gossip. Mm, 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 mm. That's all right. Number three, y'all ready? Are y'all ready? I'm not backing off, y'all. I'm not, I'm not one of these type of little preachers going to sit there and go, well, but I know it's early. The sun ain't even come up yet. Thank y'all for being here. Watch this. You are blessed, hallelujah, to be able to get up and come to the house of worship. They were, Listen, they stand in line for three hours over in Africa, just standing at the door, ready to worship God. I don't feel sorry for Christians. Nope, 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 nope. Above all people, we are the most blessed nation in the whole wide world, and you got to beg Christians to worship. Shame on America. True salvation will fill you with joy. How many of y'all know some people just don't want you to be happy? <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Some people, they would rather you use 120 muscles to frown than 72 muscles to smile. Some people don't want you happy. They, 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 they want you here, but shh, shh. Listen, you just can't be that happy. I'm going to heaven, and you tell me to shh. I'm born again, and you tell me to shh. I got the Holy Ghost, and you tell me to settle down. Shh. Some people just, they watch this. Some people hunger for sadness. Some people don't want you happy. They don't want joy. I am happy. Hallelujah, I'm trying to be good. Y'all know what joy stands for? J-O-Y, Jesus over you. Jesus over you. And how many of you know when you allow Jesus, hallelujah, to be over you, you ain't got nothing but joy in your life because you've got the attributes of Jesus Christ. And Jesus this morning, watch me, is not in heaven crying. Jesus this morning, I believe with all my heart, is standing up and the fresh fire from heaven is still blowing and prison doors are still opening and captives are being set free right now and souls are being saved all over this world and the angels, hallelujah, are just rejoicing. I had one pastor, so funny, Greg. He said, how many sermons you preach on Sunday? I said, three. This was so funny. I laughed at him. He said, well, listen. Settle down first. Y'all think I'm lying, don't you? This is how, and this is what broke my heart, Howard. These are pastors that had become more of a show and the lights and being politically correct and not offending people, not getting put in jail because you preach the word of God. Just preach really, preach good, but, but don't drive it home at first service. Now, second service, they're a little bit more alive. And then that service may get a little bit more passionate, but don't go all the way, preacher. Now, when you get there at 2, two o'clock, let her rip. I, I, I laughed at him. I, I laughed right on the phone. I laughed right in that joker's ear. I said, you're telling me. <laughs> you're telling me. I know some of y'all sitting there going, it's 8 o'clock. I can't imagine this boy up 2 o'clock today. I'm, watch this. I'm not waiting. I feel the Holy Ghost. I am not waiting to 2 o'clock to celebrate that my prison doors have come open. I've been set free and set free indeed. And God is my Redeemer. He's my Savior. <laughs> Woo! I'm telling you, if the church would just worship God and pray, your prison doors would come open. Listen to me. I never understood Christians. I haven't. I'm going to be honest with you. I still struggle with them. Who are the, we have the Holy Spirit. We're saved. We're the most blessed and highly favored people in the world. We can worship freely without a gun being held to our heads. We have clothes on our back and a roof over our head. We're on our way to heaven where there's no sickness, no disease. Streets of gold, the pearly gates, the crystal sea. 
Christians can be the meanest, cruelest, no joy. How many of y'all know Christians? Be honest with me. When you see them come, you're sitting there going, oh, God, please tell me it's not just me. Come on. Y'all just afraid because it may be sitting near you. <laughs> Oops. That should not be our case. I'm pleading, hallelujah, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, joy, back in the house of God. I'm, ple I'm pleading today that Christians can be the, be the happiest and the most joyful people, that when people look at our life, they will want what we have, and not run from us, but run to us. Of all people, we should have joy, joy, joy. Down in our heart. Where? Down in our heart. I got the judge. Old vacation Bible school coming back out. It changed my life. Listen to me. Acts 16, 34. I'll leave you with this. The jailer brought them into his house. Praise team, you guys come. Listen to what he did. Here's how you know you're a Christian. Watch. After he beat them, Eddie, after he stripped them. Put them in the innermost part of the prison. Watch what the jailer does now. He brought them to his house. He didn't say, I'll meet you at Colton's. No. He said, I have been so touched by God. God has touched me so much. I want you to come to my house. My family's got to meet you. <laughs> my children have to see what God really looks like. My house is open. Will you please come to my house today? And watch what he does. I love this. I love this. I love this. He set a meal before them. Sort of sounds like Jesus at the great banquet table, don't it? He was filled with joy. Watch. Not because he got set free. Not because he didn't get killed. Y'all watch. <clears throat> because he had to come to believe in God. He had joy. I know this may not be a deep theological sermon for some of you. He had joy for one reason. And I'm going to commission y'all today with, this, with this, this, this deal, okay? Money will not make you joyful. A big house will not make you joyful. Watch this. Even if you had perfect health in your body, that doesn't mean you're going to have joy in your life. Whew, I feel this in my spirit. I have joy. Not because of a 950-seat sanctuary. Oh, I love it here. I love my church. I love you as my family. Y'all are not church members. Listen to me. You are my family. And I want to wash your back this morning. I want to wash your feet this morning. I don't want to stab you in the back. I want to wash your back. But there's one reason I've got joy in my life. I know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. You say, Brian, that's it? That's enough. Did y'all hear me? Watch this. I I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to Bible study Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. I come to church both services on Sunday. Watch this. It does you no good until you apply it. That's some good preaching right there. Y'all may not like it. I like it. You can, go, you can teach a Wanners, RAs, GAs, Vacation Bible School. I'm telling y'all, you'll work yourself to death and not have joy in your life. I have joy, Jesus, over me. That's why I've got joy. So in Jesus' name, this altar's open. I don't know if the sermon meant anything to you. I know it changed me, it wrecked me. I have been in prison before, have y'all? Well, Lord, no. Where, where was you at, Eastern State? Y'all, were so church is so weak. We automatically go to fleshly things. Hey, did you hear about someone? What did he do? When we 
has should have joy. What is joy? Jesus over us. Jesus over you. And when you let Jesus be over you and over your household, your prison doors will come open. When you allow Jesus to be over you and your marriage, prison doors will come open. So in Jesus' name, it's up to us now. What about you? Let me go over these points one more time. You ready? Here we go. Number one, true salvation will set you free from your past. Some of you need to be set free from your past right now. In Jesus' name, you need to get out of your seat. You need to come to this right here. You need to forgive yourself. You need to let God forgive you. And listen to me in Jesus' name. Your past is the past. That's why they call it the past. Number two, this is a big one. True salvation will allow you to heal the ones you've wounded. Are you happy about hurting somebody? Are you happy about getting the last word in? Are you happy that you finally got to tell Beulah her four no more what sister so-and-so is doing down the block? See, true salvation, I'm telling y'all, true salvation won't allow you to do that. True salvation will make you get a washcloth. Greg, how can I wash it back? Chris, how can I wash it back? The churches have dropped the washcloths. We have dropped the washcloths. Instead of washing backs, we beat backs. They deserve it. We don't want what we deserve. None of us in here today, you don't want what you deserve. Because there's nobody in here right now that can make it to heaven because you're a good person. The last thing is true salvation will fill you with joy. I am so happy this morning. Not because I'm your preacher. I love that. Not because I'm Dana Rafferty's husband. And I love that. Not because I'm Blake and Destiny's father. I love that. But maybe the reason why you don't have joy in your life is because you're, you're looking at something else to try to fill you. Oh. You're looking at someone. <laughs> Hallelujah, boy. I, I can just go on. and Oh, I got to stop. You're looking for another avenue to fill your spiritual side. Watch this. Nobody can fill your spiritual side but a spiritual God. Watch this. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? You ready? Ready? Nothing in this world can fill you. Drugs cannot fill you. Alcohol cannot fill you. Church attendance cannot fill you. Feel you. The Bible says there's a name above all names. That when you say the name of Jesus, every demon in hell has to flee. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is God. There is only one name under heaven that man must be saved under, and that is the name of Jesus Christ. And there's only one God that can fill you with J-O-Y, and his name is Jesus. Woo! Are you happy you got joy this morning? Maybe if you don't, the reason why is because you're going to other things to try to fill you. Maybe the reason why you don't have joy is because you're hurting people, not healing people. Maybe you've dropped your washcloth and maybe you need to pick it back up. Maybe. <laughs> your past has got you in jail. Father God, I've done what you told me to do. Only you can save. Only you can fill this altar. <laughs> Only you can play this song. Only you can preach this word. So God, I pray that this altar is filled with your people. And God, you're dealing with them in Jesus' name.
This altar's open. Y'all need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive yourself, sir. Ma'am, you need to forgive yourself. Your past is in the past. Some of you this morning, you've dropped your washcloth. You need to pick it back up and wash it back. You say, Brian, I'll never go to them until they come to me. That's not God, sir. It's not God. Maybe you've lost your joy. Maybe you just don't have no joy in your life no more. You know why? Because maybe you're trying to get filled by other things, and maybe Jesus is not over you like he once was. So in Jesus' name, I'm done. Thank you, Father God. Praise him this morning.